This is the FET simulator on magnetic resonance imaging. Uh, and there's in fact a heck of a lot going on in this simulator, so we'll try to talk through the main parts that are relevant to our discussion for today. So we're starting out on this tab that is the simplified nuclear magnetic resonance uh, to try to understand the phenomena of magnetic resonance from the nucleus of atoms uh, before we go into actually the simulation of an MRI. So. What this is supposed to be showing me in this little uh, simulation are the protons that are within the nucleus of hydrogen atoms, and hydrogen atoms are abundant in the water molecules that somebody has in their body. Uh, and then it's showing us these little arrows to show us that uh, the spin of these protons within the nucleus of the hydrogen are causing them to act like little tiny magnets. And so uh, depending on which magnetic state they're in, up or down, they actually have different energies. So if you look over here in our energy diagram, in the down state, the uh, protons are in a higher energy state. And then if they are pointing up, they are in a lower energy state. Uh, and so you'll notice that periodically they jump one orientation to another on their own. Now, in this system, I'm also in a... Uh, magnet from a magnetic field here, which is right now at 0.75 Tesla. If I turn that down to zero, you'll notice that all of the little arrows that are on the screen disappear. There's no more external magnetic field here. I still have little magnets here, but now the energy states are actually the same uh, as one another. So if we go back and have, uh, let's just go to one Tesla. Uh, then I have a certain gap in energy between the energy states of protons that are in the down orientation and protons that are in the up orientation. So in order to produce the phenomena of magnetic resonance, I want these little protons to act like little radio antennas. I want them to absorb energy and then re-emit energy in a new direction in the form of a radio wave. So I have to turn on uh, a source of the radio waves externally. Uh, so here's a power and frequency that I can use to adjust uh, the waves that are being sent in here. So let's just go to 25% power. So this is uh, envisioning this as a wave view. You can also use a photon view if you prefer to see things as photons. Um, so I'm sending photons in there, but I'll notice that the energy that I'm sending these photons in doesn't correspond to the energy needed to transition these magnets between the two uh, states. And so nothing is happening that wasn't happening before I turned my radio wave source on. However, if I adjust the frequency, so I'm going to need to go to a lower frequency, a lower energy, so that it matches that energy gap, suddenly uh, I get cases where these little proton antennas will absorb the radio wave coming in from the bottom uh, and then re-emit it and send a new radio signal out to the side. And if I have some detector here, I'm able to actually detect those radio waves coming off and use that information to figure out where these protons are located. So if I change, say, to a two Tesla field, that actually increases the energy gap between the states here for my uh, little protons, so I would actually have to then adjust the frequency until I get it to match that gap before these protons start acting like these miniature radio antennas and emitting radio waves uh, in a new direction. So that's the main uh, simulator's way of showing this phenomena of magnetic resonance. So then how do you use this magnetic resonance to do some uh, form of imaging. Well, uh, that's the simplified MRI tab here. Let me pause things running on here so my computer doesn't freeze up on me. So here, uh, same kind of setup, but now I have a couple of different things that are built in. Uh, I still have the external magnetic field in the back, uh, which I could turn down to nothing, uh, or I could turn up as high as three Teslas. And uh, in doing so, uh, that sets the orientation of these magnets and also how big the energy gap is between them. So we may need to flip back to the last tab in order to see things because on this screen we don't actually see what that energy gap is. Uh, so here is a bunch of protons which are in the water molecules in this person's head. And again, uh, we can turn on our radio wave source and uh, tune its frequency 
so that we get these emitted radio waves. So right now, let's see, I'm at a one Tesla field. If I go back, my one Tesla field required me to have a frequency of, it was about 43, 42.6 uh, megahertz, huh? 40, okay. So go back here, drag this one until we get to the 42.6. And I notice now I'm getting a lot of my little magnets in this person's head to act as radio antennas uh, and send signals out, which are picked up by my detector over here uh, on the side. And if I want more signal, I can turn up the power uh, and I should get more of these radio wave photons to come out as a result into my detector. All right, so I'm going to turn power off momentarily uh, just to illustrate one other piece of this. So right now uh, we're showing these little atomic nuclei. I'm going to take those out for a moment uh, and show you what else we can do with this machine. We have these gradient magnets, and so that's what's symbolized by these little separate coils down at the bottom and along the side. Right now my magnetic field is uniform everywhere in the uh, system here, but if I turn on the uh, horizontal gradient, let's just put it halfway up, you'll notice what happens is the magnetic field gets weaker over on the left-hand side and stronger over on the right-hand side. And what that's going to mean is I would need lower energy radio waves to flip my protons over here on the left and higher energy radio waves to flip my protons on the right because there's a bigger energy gap. Uh, and you can, in fact, make that energy gap even larger if you change the gradient higher so that you have an even bigger magnetic field over on the right and an even lower magnetic field over on the left. You can do a similar thing vertically. So I can make my magnetic field really strong at the bottom and really weak at the top uh, with this particular simulator. And that's going to be helpful to steering the MRI image to a certain location that we want to image. So we'll turn these atomic nuclei back on and we'll give this guy a tumor. So you'll notice the tumor is symbolized by a higher collection of these little water molecules, these proton spin magnets, if you will. Uh, and so let's get things going here again. Um, so right out of the gate, I'm going to get more signals out of a place where uh, there is going to be a higher density of these protons. So I would you know, suspect something being there, but I'm also getting a lot of signals from lots of other places in here uh, that I don't necessarily want. So what I would really like to do is tune it so that the majority of my signals are coming from the area of the tuner, and that's where the gradient comes in. If we change it so that we have different values across uh, horizontally and different values across vertically, then we're making the magnetic field strength one value here and different values in the neighboring regions. And then it's simply a matter of tuning our frequency to get the appropriate energy to get a lot of signals out of the tumor area and not very many signals out of the other areas. I think actually I went lower there, so I might need to go lower frequency on my system here. And so by fine tuning the magnetic field, and again, this is just a crude two dimensional representation, you can make a system where the majority of the radio signals that are being produced are coming from the area you want to target and you get a good image of that location in the person's head and you don't get much information coming from other parts of the head on the MRI image.